Is there anything that we can also expect in the distant future? And the distant future. And how about something optimistic? We'll get to that. Uh, in the distant future, things are going to get really heavy because naturally the whole uh, a basic principle of the material world is that once it's set in motion, just like a building, you build a building, what happens? And then you have to work to maintain it. Why? Because it's continuing to deteriorate. The material world is the same way. The supreme being sets it in motion, and gradually things begin to deteriorate. So there's messengers, prophets, incarnations of God which come here to try to keep things in balance. And they do keep things in balance. But man also has free will. And the more free will they have to desire to be free from the principles that the supreme being has set in motion, then the more things will deteriorate at a faster clip. So basically, at the, the Kali Yuga, which we're in right now, started 5,000 years ago. It's predicted to last 332,000 years. And at the end of this Kali Yuga, things are going to become so difficult in this planet that the planet won't produce the proper foods, vegetables, vegetation, uh, people because of either uh, wars or industrial pollution um, will become reduced that they'll simply live in cliques little clans here and there. The, won't, the world won't be profusely populated. Uh -huh. There'll just be cliques here and there. You're the talking age, ago, how, how long ago is that? How long ago? That's a long way off. Yeah, it's a long way off. 200, yeah. 300,000 years. Yeah. So we're not going to see any of this in our lifetime. Well, yeah. Things are actually getting better in the, in, in the short run. But towards the end, it's said that uh, people will live but maybe 15 years. Whoa. Uh, girls will give birth at five, six, and seven years old. Oh men, my goodness! Men will become gray at the age of twelve. Anything over twelve will be considered old age. So people, will, the whole, the whole uh, uh, quality of life deteriorates. Become deteriorate until so the, more, the more people live out of harmony with God, with the divine. That's exactly it. Yeah. Now, what we're seeing now, though, it seems, is uh, at least uh, you know I give talks all over Metro Detroit and. People come and they're very interested in the metaphysical. It mm. seems there's a whole increase in in interest in the spirit. Like that, you'll notice a trend, where the trend is going up and down, up and down, but gradually it's going down, or gradually it's going up. Similarly, with this golden age within Kali Yuga, is like the Kali Yuga is gradually a downward trend. You cannot stop it, but within that trend, there's an upward shift. And we're in that beginning of that upward shift that is predicted to last another 10,000 years. Now, that's a pretty good long time, you might say. Yeah. But within this 10,000 years, there's going to be some extraordinary changes. People are going to become more spiritual, more psychic. They're going to, be ha they're ha going to have uh, communication with higher beings. This is going to be a more common event. Wow. And uh, also we can see that there's a polarization going on. This is an example. This is, the, the polarization is that there's forces of darkness are becoming stronger. Forces of light are also becoming stronger. But the forces of light are more powerful than the forces of darkness. So it takes fewer people to participate in that force of light to counteract the forces of darkness. Wow. So those people that are feeling disoriented, a little disgruntled, like they don't fit in, they don't know why, as soon as they start plugging in to their spiritual nature, they'll, be at, they'll begin to feel a lot more fired up, a lot more enthusiastic. They'll feel like they're reaching their destiny. And this is because of this influence, this, the time being now that the spiritual aspect of life will become more prominent. And naturally, it's not ex simply a few people, but as, say, like you and me, we're both engaged in working towards spiritual life, towards spiritual progress. We may not come in contact with each other all the time, but as you're engaged in spiritual progress, I'm engaged in spiritual life, because we reach that spiritual level, we automatically connect. When there's that connection, there's a momentum. The more people who connect, either physically or spiritually on a higher level, it creates a momentum, like a snowball effect. And as that momentum increases, the spiritual uh, atmosphere that pervades the world, to whatever degree, actually becomes more amplified. And uh, everybody feels that, at least to some degree. Somebody may argue that a lot of the problems on the planet are in the name of religion, especially we see the fundamentalist, fanatical types of religions. Um, uh, you know, when you look at the Middle East, uh, the whole Islamic, uh, Judaic struggle that goes on. So, so much is in the name of religion. And uh, 
uh, people in the name of religion blow up airplanes and uh, do all sorts of nasty things. That's right. Uh, how can you talk about that? Real religion incorporates universal truths. The more any religion neglects those universal truths, the more divisive they become. They lose that universal vision, and they become divisive and more localized in the sense that they uh, actually, let's put it this way, the more fundamentalistic a person is, regardless of what religion, the more fearful they are of what they do not understand. The more fearful they are, the more they will resort to fanatical means to justify what they do. That is not real religion. That is not real spirituality. Real spirituality means that we all understand what our spiritual identity is, that we're all the same, and incorporate that universal truth and that universal vision into our life and into our religion. The yes. less you do that, the less spiritual progress you'll actually make, regardless of what your allegiance is to any religion. Uh, the, the one nice thing I like about the, uh, the Vedic uh, uh, writings that I've studied is that uh, they, they say, uh, you know, the ABC, the first thing you understand is that we're all the same, we're all souls. Right. So how would you want to hurt another living being if you're truly spiritual? That's exactly it. So the goal of life is to live simply and think highly. That means life will give you what you need, maybe not necessarily what you want, because what we want are usually a little on the selfish side, but it'll give you what you need. Similarly, <clears throat> high thinking means that we understand that we're spirit, we're not this body. The body is temporary, it comes and goes, it grows, it gets old, and we leave it. So if we can see everybody, if we can see this world as a temporary plane, a plane that we're flying through, and our seats may be good, may be first class, may be second class. The fact of it is that they're temporary seats. Our positions are all temporary here. We're going from one place to another. If we can understand that this life is meant to lead us to a higher and more spiritual consciousness, we can all help each other reach that consciousness. The more we see that this reality, this lifetime is all I've got and I want to make the best of it, the more you're going to struggle against everybody else who's also sharing this world. Yeah. The more you're going to see that, or the more what's going to happen is, like I say, the more divisive people become. This is mine, this is yours, bug off. <laughs> you know, the fact of the matter is, it's all given by God anyway. We are here only temporarily. Where are we going with this life? We yeah. can all get there together. Now, uh, of course, there is predestiny, and therefore people mm -hmm. can make predictions. There's also free will. So my question to you is, if uh, people really had a radical change and took to the spiritual, can they change what's already predicted? Yeah. Yeah, it's considered that the, the more... Here's an example. Uh, the more in balance you work with nature, the more nature will give what you need when you need it. The more out of balance you are with nature, then it's kind of like swimming upstream in a river. You're working really hard, but you're not getting too far. Yeah. So life is, in some ways, if you're working with your destiny, what this life, the purpose of life, you just ride along the river. It'll take you where you're meant to be when you're meant to be there. No problems. Life doesn't have to be a struggle. Similarly, if you work in accordance with nature and the spiritual mode of life, whatever difficulty you had will be reduced. Sounds life, like go life with the flow. Get, yeah, go with the flow. <laughs> let God, you know, let go, let God. Let go, let God. So that's the thing. When you're more spiritually inclined, the more you'll see the difficulties that you once had, not so difficult anymore. Yeah. Well, why is that? You know, and similarly, what you need to accomplish your destiny, automatically, you've got it. Uh, from, from what I've read in other, other people's works, um, I remember back in the 80s, Frances Moore LaPay in her book, uh, uh, how she was saying that we have so much uh, land, uh, everybody on the planet can be fed very nicely. It's because of the yeah. greed and the ignorance that... Uh, no, that's not going on. I, I also uh, I was in England recently, and I, they did a whole documentary on the mad cow disease. Oh, and, of course, yeah. it all comes from feeding the cow on uh, food that's made of cow's parts. Yeah. Right. So just a matter of trying to get as much profit as possible uh, while neglecting the real purpose of life. Uh, Steve, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, okay. Mr. Stephen Knapp, author of the Vedic Prophecies, and you look into the future. And I want to thank you for joining us 
but out of the ordinary into the extraordinary.